We are going to Athens to look at the inheritance of the archaic and the classical periods of Greece. First, Acropolis. Here is the view of the southwestern side of Acropolis from the Hill of Muses. It's a large, tall, flat top rock in the middle of the city. And this is the Google Earth version of the southern slope of the rock. Now, from the west on the Areopagus Hill, together with what feels like several hundred young people, we are looking at the western slope of Acropolis. Following the Persian invasion and destruction of Athens in 480 BC, the sacred buildings and temples from the Archaic period lay in ruins. After the Greek victory, the next generation began the rebuilding. Greece was entering its classical period. So it's the next morning and to the top of the rock we go. The monumental gateway of Acropolis called Apropylia was built in 432 BC. Here it is in the morning against the rising sun. Around 420 BC, to the south of Propylia, the Athenians erected a temple to their goddess of victory, the iconic temple of Athena Nike. And now, the Parthenon. It is regarded as an enduring symbol of Greece, Athenian democracy, and Western civilization. It was built between 447 and 438 BC. The sculptures of the east and west pediments, a triangular shaped gable between the roof and the columns, were finished six years later. We are now going around the temple to see its eastern side. The Parthenon is a Doric temple with Ionic architectural features. Throughout the classical world there are structures which are called Ionic, Doric, Corinthian, Tuscan or Composite. This is usually associated with the capital order, the top of the columns within the structures. The remaining of the sculptures of both pediments of the Parthenon are at the British Museum and the Acropolis Museum. Here are the scaled reconstructions of the east and west pediments. The eastern pediment depicts the birth of Athena, while the western depicts the dispute between Athena and Poseidon for the possession of their beloved city. Through the centuries, Parthenon served as an Orthodox and a Catholic church, and then as a mosque. Because of religious occupants, the structure was more or less intact. However, when the Venetians laid siege to the Acropolis in the 17th century, the Parthenon was used as a munition store and therefore bombarded. The bombardment resulted in an explosion that destroyed a large part of the temple. North of the Parthenon is the Erechtheion. The temple, built between 421 and 406 BC, is divided in two main parts. The east, devoted to Athena Polius, protector of the city, and the west, to Poseidon Erechtheus. Erechtheus was one of the first kings of Athens in Greek mythology. The temples contain several sacred objects worshipped by Athenians. The originals of the famous Cariadetes, or Cari, female sculpture supporting the southern part of the temple, are in the Acropolis Museum. By the time we are ready to leave, the crowd at the top of the rock thickens. After walking out of Propylia and turning left onto a narrow pass south, we see the theater of Herod's Atticus. It was built in Roman times in 161 AD by the Athenian magnate in memory of his wife. It was restored in 1950 and is now the main venue for the Athens festival. Going further down and to the eastern end of the southern slope, we reach the theater of Dionysus, the god of plays and wine. The theater, which seated 17,000, was the place of the ancient Athens' biggest theatrical celebration. The structure dates back to the 4th century BC and is considered to be the birthplace of Greek tragedy. All the rooms of the Acropolis Museum, which hold Acropolis findings, are open to photography, but a hall with the objects from an earlier archaic period, including several female statues and the famous four horses, is not. 
we only manage to sneak in a couple of shots. But there is also the other side of the Acropolis, its northern slope. In ancient times, many shrines were nestled among the steep cliffs, caves and pathways. The area at the bottom of the rock, called Anaphotica, was settled at the time of Greek independence by workers of the Cycladic Islands and later by the refugees from Asia Minor. Now there are only a few houses remaining, the rest are abandoned. Acropolis is a very interesting and beautiful sight. Here are a couple of more views at night and a song at the foot of the rock. Να πίνει σου ζω στου λευτέρι Νύχτα δεν θα έρθει σαν να μέρει Να έχεις δικά σου μυστικά Να έχεις δικά σου μυστικά Και να θυμάσαι πως τα ξέρει Νύχτα δεν θα έρθει Salam, baby.